we continue with the uh, presentation of Lukas Schlagenhauf, who is a PhD student with Jing Wang at the lab for functional polymers at EMPA. He's going to talk about toxicology or toxic effects due to abrasion of nanoparticles called nanotubes in epoxy. Please, I'm curious to hear what you say. Thank you for the nice introduction and welcome to the presentation of our study. Uh, there are different laboratories of the EMPA involved in this study. I want to thank all people that were involved and also the NRP64 for the funding. The motivation for this uh, pro uh, study was that in our laboratory we developed a carbon nanotube epoxy nanocomposite that has en enhanced properties. On one side you have enhanced mechanical properties like the fracture toughness is increased by uh, more than 60%. We can increase the flexural strength. And additionally, we now also have samples that are electrical conductive, for example. The question then arose, is this product safe? Because we have carbon nanotubes in there. Uh, we know that they can be toxic. And what happens when you degrade this uh, uh, nanocomposite, for example, by sanding as if Edgar is doing here with some wood, or uh, if you have any kind of degradation. So will those carbon tubes go out of the epoxy, or will they still remain inside of the particles? And how toxic are those particles when they are inhaled? We are producing the, these nanocomposites by ourselves. We're using bay tubes as filler material. Those are multivolt carbon nanotubes with the lengths of about one to five micrometer. When they are delivered, they are in an agglomerated state. And we first have to disperse them in the epoxy resin. We're doing this by the, uh, sonication and redoll milling. We're applying quite, uh, quite high um, force on the nanotubes. And after processing, they have a length of about seven, 700 nanometers. Uh, after curing, we can uh, have a look at the samples. Uh, in this study, we did uh, simulate the sanding process or uh, um, a scratching process in general. And for this, we have an uh, abrasion device, the paper abrasor. With this device, you mount the sample on a rotating disc. You apply an abrasive wheel here. And by rotation, you have friction between disc and wheel, and you generate particles. And we collect all those particles uh, in with a tube, and then the particles are provided to uh, analyze devices where you can measure the concentration, the size, the surface of those particles. And we also can collect them on filters for image analysis or to measure the particle composition. Here is the result from a one weight percent carbon nanotube epoxy nanocomposite. Um, we have two devices to measure the particle size distribution of the abraded particles. One device is measuring the particles in the nanometer range from 10 to 500 nanometers, the SMPS and the APS is, is measuring particles in the size range from 500 nanometers to 20 micrometers. And uh, you can see from the result that we almost have no particle released below 100 nanometers. It is 100 nanometer. And above 100 nanometer, we have a, a particle size distribution with a maximum at 450 nanometer. In the micrometer range, we also see a particle size distribution here with a maximum at 800 nanometers. And the weakest particles have a size of about five micrometer. Then uh, further, we also wanted to know how, what is the morphology of the braided particles. So we did TEM measurements, and here we did see different kind of particles. We have 
normal particles. Here, for example, from the boxy from an epoxy sample. And when we go to the carbon nanotube na nanocomposite, we can see that there are nanotubes protruding from uh, abraded particles. But we also did find some freestanding carbon nanotubes, as shown here, or even an agglomerate of carbon nanotubes. Those freestanding carbon nanotubes we have found, they have a length of about 350 nanometers. This means that during the abrasion process, they have been chopped. Then we were in, uh, interested in the toxicity of those separated particles. We did in uh, vitro measurements according to this scheme that is adapted, adapt, adopt, adapted from different uh, um, publications. We, uh, uh, there are different nanoparticle cell interaction that can cause cell deaths. There is the, um, the production of reactive oxygen species that <coughs> can induce um, oxidative stress to the cell that, for, that can then induce inflammation, genotoxicity and further cell deaths. Further, we, have, we could have genotoxicity that could lead to cell deaths or uh, cell deaths could, cause, could be caused by any kind of reaction of the cells on the nanoparticles. We tested two cell types, uh, lung cells, epithelial lung cells, and macrophages. Uh, first result from the ROS measurements. We did measure different kind of particles. Uh, the pure nanotubes for once, then the uh, abraded particles from a 1 weight percent carbon nanotube epoxy composite and from a 0.1 weight percent nanocomposite. And as you can see, we have um, induced oxidative stress from the nanotubes, but we don't see any induced oxidative stress from the abraded particles. Uh, the inflammation was tested with the ELISA setup with the same particles. And for this measurement, we didn't see any induced inflammatory response of the cells, neither from the macrophages nor from the epithelial lung cells. The DNA damage was, was measured by the, with the comet assay. And similar to the inflammation experiment, we, here we don't see any response of the cells on the nanoparticles. And in the end also, we measure the cell viability. Here, uh, we see an impact of the nanotubes on the cells. Uh, they have a moderate effect on the cell viability, but uh, we don't see any effect of the, from the nano, from the abraded particles from the nanocomposites. So a summary, you can say we, by the abrasion process, we generate particles in the size range from 100 nanometers to five micrometers. And during this process, there are freestanding carbon nanotubes released. But uh, uh, during the toxicity measurements, we only did see, did see a reaction, uh, we did see a induced formation of reactive oxygen species and the decreased cell viability from the carbon nanotubes, but we did not see any impact of the abraded particles. So I want to thank you for listening and feel free to ask questions. Thank you very much, Volker Schlagenhau, for an interesting and important presentation. Questions, please. Yeah. Um, I would like to ask about the uh, clustering of the nanotubes. Did you use a dispersant or some surfactant molecule before you integrate them into the epoxy? No, we didn't. We, we just did the sonication and the three-roll milling. So um, let me just go back. Um, after processing, you can see we still have some uh, agglomerates present in the epoxy resin. They are still there, not that much anymore, but they are there. And, yeah. But still, I think that the Van der Waals interaction are so strong uh, 
uh, and you could uh, have individual nanotube, and then you can reach even higher percentage of uh, fracture toughness enhancement, like 200% or more. Yeah, uh, this for sure. Um, the, this sample was produced according to uh, another study, and in the other study they also uh, investigated different kind of um, dispersion methods, and they did see that in the end it didn't matter that much how, how they dispersed the nanotubes. Um, they always have more or less the same uh, increase of mechanical properties. Okay, thank you. Other questions? You may have mentioned that, but I forget. Where is uh, CN casein epoxy resins used? Um, nowadays, no, they're not that common. In, uh, they're, for example, for sport goods and bicycles. They are used there for um, baseball bats, golf clubs, um, sailing boats have them. Mm -hmm. Then further you have parts in cars where you need to reduce the weight. Um, I know, for example, Audi, the gas tank is made of an epoxy, no, from a PON carbon tube composite, for example. So you don't see them much now um, today, but they are there. But if you mentioned, you, you said sailing boats, huh? If, yeah. if um, there are a lot of work done on sailing boats, which creates um, dust, you would say that's no problem according to your findings? Yes, at the moment I would say there's not much problems. Also on sailing boats, usually you are using a lot of water to manipulate your devices. Or then, and as long as the parts are not airborne, mm. then you anyway have no problems. The effects you saw, like um, um, uh, oxidative stress, did you watch that over a certain period of time, or was that an acute result? Uh, that was an acute result. The, f our, um, the arrows measurements was for one day, maximum, or three mm -hmm. hours. And um, all the results we present are for acute. So uh, with the, our results, you cannot say anything about long-term uh, um, effects of those particles. So ROS that. was not going down again after a certain time, or, or glutathione coming up again? Um, you no, don't I've know? No, I don't know now. You don't know, OK. That would be but still, we only see it for the pure carbon nanotubes, yeah. not for the nanocomposite. You know, I think uh, acute reactions could simply be a reaction, a reactions of defense rather than a real problem. However, if, per, if it persists, the reaction, then we should uh, be careful. 